This is What Do You Bring to the Table, a nonprofit project made by youth for youth that aims to explore the many, many career paths available within our Canadian food systems. By interviewing industry leaders across the country, we get a first hand look at the various existing and emerging agri food career opportunities with a particular focus on equity and sustainability. We want to thank the Gailey Foundation for their generosity in supporting this project, as well as the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. Please visit our website youthinfoodsystems.ca and sign up for our free monthly e-newsletter to stay involved. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Links to those are on our website. If you like what we're doing, please drop a like, review, or comment. Or, if you have the means to, contribute with a monetary donation through our website. Thanks for listening! This is Season 3, Episode 1, Jingping and Mary Eve. Hello everyone, I'm Jingping and I'm a volunteer for Youth and Food Systems program. Today I'll be interviewing Marie Eve from Squamish Climate Action Network to learn more about her contributions to the food industry. Are you able to give a brief introduction of yourself? Yeah, so try not to go back too far. I'm from Quebec. I grew up near some fields where I got the chance to pick fruits and vegetables and go to the farmer's market in the summer. Not that it's really why I'm doing what I'm doing now, but it's interesting I find to see that that's how I started at a really early age. Uh, I worked in the nursery. I definitely grew a love for plants and moved on to arts, photography, excuse me, photography and films, which brought me to Vancouver. Worked in many different industries until eventually I had to pivot because I had started a family in Squamish. I found permaculture design completed a diploma with them. And that led me to eventually look around and find Squamish Can, who I started volunteering with. And from volunteering with them, I am now working with them. So what exactly is your role in this organization? Well, it's pretty broad and it changes a little bit at times. I'm a food project coordinator. So, so far for the last few years, for the last maybe five years, I was mainly in the spring doing a plant cell. So I would produce thousands of seedlings that are organically oh. grown so that we could do a fundraiser and sell local plants to gardeners, uh, vegetables, pollinator flowers. And um, for example, this year, my contract slightly changed where instead of the plant cell, I ended up, because we, we need upgrades on our greenhouse, so we decided to change things a little bit. So now I organize a workshop series on gardening education. Sorry if there's noise, my window's open. Um, <laughs> okay. Gardening education, as well as, as food education series. So we completed gardening education in the spring. We had soil health, we had a medicinal garden, how to start your garden, for example. Mm -hmm. And in the fall, we're gonna have food preservation, uh, sourdough making, things related to what you can do at home. Uh, other than that, I look after our seed library, which was started from a team of enthusiastic people in 2017. I took over in 2019 after mm -hmm. it had started. Uh, with that, I organized the CD Saturday or CD Sunday event, some seed saving workshops, and what else? I look after the, the greenhouse where I do the plant cells, so I put that into production in the summer. And the food that I grow there is gathered with the other school gardens that we manage with our organization. And it all goes to a farm stand weekly where we sell those vegetables at a very good price for the community. That sounds wonderful. Now, let's get started with our actual questions. So firstly, is there an inspiration behind Squamish Climate Action Network? And if so, could you yeah. elaborate a little bit more on what the inspiration is? Yeah, that's what I looked up actually this morning because I knew the story um, vaguely. I asked our executive director because she's been part of it. Um, so it comes down, I just need to check my notes. It comes down to um, this woman, Anna Santos, in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, she wanted to bring forward 
a discussion about climate change in a local on a local level. Oh. She organized an eight week series of movie nights. Uh, they saw the numbers of attendees grow from week to week, and there was a lot of interest. They had special guests coming in for discussions as well. And um, after the series wrapped up, then they felt like there was a need for more. And so oh. Chris Penn Brink, our current executive director, with Anna, who's no longer in Squamish, unfortunately, they both decided to start Squamish Climate Action Network, this nonprofit organization. So it was definitely born a uh, grassroots movement, definitely in Squamish, and grew from there. That's so cool. Yeah. So moving on, as you mentioned, you are a food projects coordinator. So what are some goals you wish to achieve with the food projects that are coordinated by you? Um, one of the big one, which I think really lines up with the mission and vision of the organization is really to inspire the community that they can do so much. It's inspiring them. It's, um, it's inspiring them to grow food, to learn about pollinators, to learn about soil. And that's just in the food sector because mm -hmm. our organization also deals with reducing waste and energy transportation. But within food, what I do, um, teaching them to save and share seeds, also, to, like I said, we have workshops that are teaching them how to preserve food, uh, teaching them about soil, just to enable them to give them the tools and show them that, hey, here's what you can do if you want to. And I have to say over the years to, to see out of, let's say a workshop, to see the one person that comes at the end and tells you that it made a big difference and they're gonna go and yeah. try it and mm -hmm. they want to do more. It's always very fulfilling to know that you're sending out all that information and those resources and you're making yourself available and and it's got an impact that some people actually the way i was impacted to in the past that people want to try and i wouldn't say do more because that doesn't sound fair people do so much already but mm -hmm. to, to try to in a way change sometimes their ways and do things a little bit better yeah definitely that i feel like those are some really inspiring goals it's nice that you're like kind of passing on what you learn and your own resources. That's what I feel like, especially with yeah. this related work. I'm often in meetings with Seeds of Diversity, with mm -hmm. Farm City folk here in BC. And I I feel like the sponge where I learn so much and then I can, can be the person in the community who then pass on that information to other people. So it yeah. feels, feels pretty good. It's fun to learn and it's fun to then pass it on. Yeah, I think it's so great that those are your goals and how you can achieve that. So next, what are your favorite things about your job and why? Hmm, uh, my favorite thing. I'd say it feels good to know that it makes a difference. It's not like I ever started this work thinking I'm doing it to make a difference in any way mm -hmm. but that's what it feels like over time because every time I grow food that is sold to someone who can afford it and it's local and it's organic and they get this fresh food it feels like it makes a difference and every time you pass on seeds to someone or a seedling and you teach them how to deal with it and then they go and they grow it and they take a bite out of it to me every small little thing really matters I always say to people that it doesn't matter if you make lots of mistakes, as long as you try, you're going to get something out of it. You're going to learn something, you're going to get maybe a snack out of it, or you'll get seeds out of it, or you'll get to talk to your neighbor and share something. It doesn't matter what it is, I think it all makes a difference. And I think that's what for me is my favorite part. I also like to work with plants a lot. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. And then to work with plants related to people, I think it's, it's really fun. That's awesome. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, have there been any challenges you faced in your role? And if you did have any challenges, how did you overcome these challenges? Um, the first thing that came to mind, I, I would say, is the challenges for me were learning on the spot. Like I started, yes, I did a permaculture design course diploma and it taught me a lot, but to really go and have the hands-on work and I think anyone even with experience would have had to learn through the whole cycle of the first year, let's say, where you meet all these different challenges. Every year is different. And let's say with the greenhouse operations, 
I had to learn that rats do come in greenhouses and they eat a lot oh. of stuff. And they destroy all your seedlings and they'll eat your tomatoes. Then, and, and then learn that if the greenhouse is too hot, you then have spider mites. Or then when the temperature drops in March, then everything freezes. And all these things mm -hmm. that you kind of know, but you have to learn on the spot as you do it. Um, so I would say that all these uncontrollable aspects were my first big challenge. Uh, then I think eventually it became little things like our funding is pretty good now with our organization, but we have ups and downs. And there were times where we didn't necessarily have the funding to do something that we needed to do. So you have to find a way around it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been little things as well, like organizing a workshop and you set up and then no one shows up for it. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> next time and it's okay. It's just how it goes. And we always say it's better to have quality over quantity. If one person shows up and is really engaged and interested, it's better than having a crowd of 50 who is just there to, you know, yeah. um, the idea that it doesn't matter how many people show up, but sometimes the no-shows, you, you just have to, to pick yourself up and go, okay, it's fine, next one, it'll be good. Yeah. So another question I have is your role beneficial to the food industry in any way? It can be indirectly, directly, and why? Um, I, yeah, I definitely think it is. And again, to me, it's all small scale. It's not like I'm having a huge impact on a high level. But mm -hmm. the same example I used earlier, I, I've always said for years, I said to people, that try to garden for example and they say oh i'm not doing much it's not working really well i say if you just take that one bite out of that one thing you grew or if you just add that one little patch of basil to your salad that's a whim every bite counts so every little bit of food that you grow is that food that you don't have to buy from the grocery store that has to be flown from somewhere else for example and so in that way i think that it helps in the sense where every tiny little bit adds up and matters in the end. Um, I would say that's the main reason why, and because you're creating or supporting local gardeners and local seed savers and local food preservers. And even though they're not gonna make it on a large scale, it's all gonna mm -hmm. matter in the end. Yeah, you're definitely touching a lot of people with your position and teaching them more about you know, how to live a sustainable life and plant things, you know? I like to so, think so. Yeah. I definitely think you're touching the base people. And, you know, that can move up to higher people. So, speaking of the food industry, how do you hope this industry will grow in the future? Um, I think it's going to keep going in a good direction. I have noticed the past few years how governments are paying more attention they're directing more money towards farmers, toward local agriculture. There's definitely more support, which, like I said, even though every little bit counts at our level, to know that the higher levels are supporting more and more, they're recognizing that it's a pivotal moment that people need to really engage and, and do more. Like just, let's say, for example, this, not crisis, but the fact that farmers are retiring and they're not seeing enough of a turnaround of new farmers, so they're now very seriously trying to engage youth in, in becoming farmers and actually being uh, engaged in the food industry. So I think I think that it's all gonna go, I hope, in mm -hmm. a good way. I don't know how to phrase that. It, it's got I think it's got some some future for sure, and just seeing people like you doing that helps me to see positive for the future that there's people interested that there's people that want to make a difference yeah there's so much potential in the food industry right now especially yeah. with younger kids being involved so my next question is what have you learned from being a food projects coordinator oh boy the list is long um I have learned so much, not just in the sense where I've learned how to grow seedlings and I've learned to overcome all these challenges I talked mm -hmm. about. Um, I think if I can put it in a nutshell, I've learned that, I'm going to repeat the same thing again, everything matters. It's like they always tell you, like, mm -hmm. turn off the light switch and turn off the water when you brush your teeth. It's the same for food. Every little thing that you do and learn matters. and 
you're going to make mistakes because really that's the only way to learn. If you don't make mistakes, you probably haven't tried yeah. anything new. And I, I have learned to just do what I can where I am with what I have because often I felt like I needed to do more and I wasn't doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, I, I just had to tell myself, I did what I could where I was with what I had and mm -hmm. you do your best. And I think that matters. That does. Okay. Now, may you please tell us what a regular work week would look like for you? Kind of run us through it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. That one is tough because my position changes a lot through the whole mm -hmm. year with the seasons and um, mm -hmm. but, but an average, let's say, I would say I'm, I, I work part time with the organization as well. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily okay. have a Monday to Friday mm -hmm. week. Um, let's say spring to summer right now, I would normally go to the greenhouse, I guess, yeah, almost every day and I would start seeds and I would transplant plants and I would like look after all these plants. During that time, I would also work from home on the computer and have meetings with Seeds of Diversity or Farm Folk mm -hmm. City Folks. We'd be talking about CD Saturday, CD Sunday events. I'd be planning that event. So I'm doing planning from home to deliver that um, event coming up in usually February, March. Uh, after that, I'd be looking after the Seed Library every now and then. Throughout the year, I'll go more during a certain time of the year to um, I would seek out seed donations from seed companies. Then I would um, organize the seed library, do some communications with our members, and uh, organize the workshop series once a month. I will go and facilitate that. Uh, what else? There, there's a lot of different email follow-ups, and yeah. I also help with the recycling uh, part aspect of Squamish Camp, so I'd be doing a little bit of that too. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to tell a Monday to Friday usual week and it really changes throughout the, the year for sure. Oh yeah. Which I think is interesting because it's it's never really redundant. Like it's never the same and there's always one yeah. thing that starts, one thing that end, and then you get to the next one, different projects. Mm -hmm. So lastly, what is some advice you could give to our youth that want to head into a similar direction? I would say go for it. It is possibly a little scary at times because for some people it's it seems like a dive in the unknown even if someone yeah. has studied um climate science or studied agriculture to to go in and actually get your hands in it and get started can be scary but you're just gonna learn and i'm still learning and i think i'm gonna learn my whole life and i hope i do and so i i would say go for it keep your mind open know that you're going to make mistakes and it's fine do your best and again do what you can where you are with what you have that's kind of that's my some, mm -hmm, that's some important advice and i think our viewers that are watching will definitely take that to heart and so. yeah we for sure will and that's basically all the questions i had thanks so much we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this interview oh you're very welcome thank you for for having me of course We hope you enjoyed this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table, a project of Seeds of Diversity's Youth and Food Systems program. Thanks again to the Gay Lee Foundation, the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation, and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. And of course, thanks to you for listening. See you again soon.